Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah amabad. Today's very brief video will be regarding a comment made. I'm going to paraphrase it because I've not got it in front of me right now. And the video will be very short, inshallah, because it's like 6 a.m. in the morning and I have just got back from Tahajjud and Fajr prayer. And so I haven't slept yet and the sun is about to rise. But uh, alhamdulillah, it was a, a beautiful night in prayer. So what the brother said in the comment was, uh, can't take me seriously because I'm claiming there's a lack of knowledge amongst the Muslim population, amongst the local community in our country of England. Uh, but yet I make light of issues such as the length of one's throbe and having our feet touching during the prayer. And to make kind of light of such issues as being I don't know exactly what I said, but let me clarify what I mean, because he says, you know, me having a lack of knowledge, which I fully accept, but what I do have is one thing that Allah has blessed me with is coming into the fold of Islam after 25 years of being a, a, a normal, quote unquote, atheist English type person. And the main point I'm trying to make is that Something that we should, the main thing we should focus on, I mean, take the story, the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What was the majority of his time receiving revelation spent on? Tawheed. It was spent on La ilaha illallah. And so what I'm trying to say is I'm not trying to make issues insignificant when they have significance. I'm not trying to say that. I'm saying there should be a certain amount there should be a relative response, certainly to people who are ignorant, to people who are uneducated, to people who are new to the faith. And judging people, pointing fingers, coming with an air of harshness does not really give the warm embrace that Islam should really be providing for these people. And people may know the story, for example, of the, I heard this a long time ago when I first became Muslim, of the old man who's making wudu inc incorrectly. Now, instead of just going to the man and being like, come on, like, do you not know how to make wudu, mate? Like this kind of harshness or forcing it upon the person, there sh it should come with a lightness and a gentleness. And there was like some young brothers who didn't want to embarrass the guy, who didn't want to like overstep the mark of the uncle in relation to, you know, just like being like muskeen, like being kind to the muskeen, being kind to the guy who is not full of knowledge. He said, oh, let's do a wudu competition. Who can make wudu the best? And in performing their wudu in the proper manner, the uncle saw without being told what the correct way was. And so the reason why I mentioned that story is because when people come into the fold of Islam, but they have, for example, dreadlocks or cornrows, when people come into the fold of Islam and they are wearing a throbe that is too long, or it's like this, for example, people should be welcome into the masjid. If somebody's wearing not the most appropriate clothing, then we should be going around these issues by educating in a soft way. That's what I'm trying to say. And um, So what am I calling people to? I'm calling people to la ilaha illallah. And one of the beauties of Islam, even though it is an ocean, a, a never ending ocean of, of information and knowledge that one can accumulate and absorb and learn and grow continuously for a lifetime. And in that respect, incredibly complex and, and perhaps overwhelming to the beginner but at the same time it's incredibly simple a third of the quran is uh surah al-ikhlas so you recite that three times you've recited the entire quran half of the entire religion is made up of sabr and shukr patience and gratitude 50 percent of the religion is patience in times of hardship and 50 percent of it is gratitude in times of prosperity and so one can understand that very easily god is one there is nothing like God. He begets nor is begotten. It's a very simple concept. Allah is one. You know, there, there is one God. There is nothing worthy of worship. There are no other gods except from Allah, except from the God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Incredibly simple concept. And if somebody's vibing with that and they need a little bit of support to have that second half of the Shahada, wa Muhammad ar Rasulullah then how are we going to bring them into accepting that Muhammad is a prophet? Is it through 
Don't get me wrong, we should be rigid and strong in our beliefs and stand up against injustice. But I'm talking here about having a bit of relativity when it comes to, certainly when somebody embraces Islam, like let, don't, let me say this right. If somebody embraces Islam, sorry, if somebody, maybe they haven't embraced Islam, but they know in their heart there is only one God and I believe in the prophets, as, as I did before I took my child, I think I'm Muslim. Like, whoa, this is... This is life changing. This is about to be life changing. I don't think I'll finish this point. So let's say somebody is ultimately a Muslim in their heart, but they haven't taken their shahada and entered the community and gone into the mosque and started to learn Arabic and all this kind of good stuff. And they don't know how to make wudu. They don't know how to pray. They don't know the customs about what you should, how you should be standing when you pray or what, how long your throbe should be. They don't know any of this stuff. Um, there should be, but what they're going through because of their jahiliya past, they've got decades, a decade, a decade plus worth of drinking alcohol, fornicating with girls, uh, watching pornography, being, sleeping in, and, and therefore they're going to find it hard to pray fajr, they're going to hard to find it, stop having sexual intimacy, they're going to find it hard to stop taking drinks and drugs. What I'm trying to say is that even with all those things, people are still Muslim. It's not that suddenly on the day you take your shahada, you're expected to be a perfect human because let's be real, guys, humans are not perfect. <laughs> this is a fact. So what I'm trying to say, what I was trying to get across in the video that, you know, I put my hands up and I say, yes, I'm not, uh, this channel, inshallah, throughout the years and decades and the website that I intend to um, build and bring to the people and the other forms of speaking and talking and sharing myself is my journey uh, to knowledge, my getting on and becoming a student of knowledge and acquiring, uh, memorizing the Quran, acquiring the Arabic and being a bit more scholarly. But right now, I'm just sharing my experience as a newcoming, newcomer into the religion. And what I'm trying to say is that we should be soft with people and give them, it's like a grace period. It's like, yes, an alcoholic, what, we're going to just stop alcoholics from coming into the fold of Islam because they drink alcohol every day? Or do we support them, encourage them into the fold of Islam and know that through knowledge, they will learn not to do these things? And so it's just a time, like time, um, time and sabr. And also, yes, some things may be, have a unanimous opinion amongst scholars. Some things may have, um, you know, some scholars say something, some scholars say something else. You know, if you, you shouldn't judge people. Like I say, if somebody's wearing a ring, right, for example, different men are wearing different rings on different fingers, yeah? It's like, I just think that we should focus on la ilaha illallah, like the, the Prophet did, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's a reason why the seerah is laid out in a perfect way for, to teach us something. What did the Prophet, alayhi salatu wa salam, what did he go through and how did he respond? You know, it's like the man, the, the classic story of the man who comes into the masjid and he urinates in the corner of the masjid. And what would we do? I'm talking the Muslims would be so, again, part of the rigidity and the sternness would be to go and basically do this guy in. What are you doing, mate? But the Prophet ﷺ showed this person compassion. Can we clean this guy up? Can we teach this person the adab, the etiquette of the masjid? There is a softness to the Prophet, peace be upon him, that I think is sometimes lost. So when it's like, it has to be this way, it has to be this way, it's like, guys, what... Is that really the most important thing or is that going to push? And I, know, I have examples of this. I have examples of revert brothers who have felt this sternness and been pushed away from the masjid. Now, is that not the ultimate failure? Somebody who has accepted Islam in their heart, they have also accepted it via shahada, but they're not integrated into the masjid because they've not been educated and supported in a proper way. And that's what I'm trying to share is just a little bit of my own experience and also the experience of others being something that, like say, the length of one's throbe is less important than la ilaha illallah, for example. Having your feet touch in prayer is less important than la ilaha illallah. Surely the shahada is the most important thing and we should be supporting people who believe in the statement of the shahada. So, 
I think that at the end of the day on this channel, I'm going to come across, you know, athe atheistic man telling me that I'm talking about some pie in the sky fairy tale nonsense. I'm going to have some Muslims who are going to come when I make mistakes. But as I've said in these videos, any benefit comes from Allah and any mistakes are my own. And I put my hand up from the off and say that, like say, this is a layman ignoramus fella talking just sharing his opinion and although i am aware that one must guard their tongue alhamdulillah i'm married so i have completed half my deen because i've protected my private parts but what is the other half of the deen the tongue the damage one can do with the tongue is incredibly great and you don't want to undo your good deeds but the way i've rationalized it and justified it sharing my story is that i hope that the benefit will outweigh the negative i bring upon myself and ultimately, Allah knows what's in my heart and Allah knows what I say and how I can rectify that in the future and say, look, I think anybody who's on the journey of knowledge every year, every handful of months, they look back and go, I didn't even know that. Like you're constantly thinking back in the day you was basically stupid. Like that's the essence of becoming more knowledgeable. And so at the end of the day, I think I am where I am right now. I'm going to get to where I go in the future. And so if I make a blunder, if I make a mistake, then that's just part of the journey of learning. So to conclude, the main thing I want to get across here is I still think there's benefit. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing these videos. There is benefit as far as I'm concerned, inshallah, uh, for me to share my thoughts and opinions because I think it's somewhat unique. And I'm a middle ground, like I say, between the English and the Muslim, the non-Muslim and the Ummah. And so that's why I wanted to get across, like, just because I've made light of issues that I do agree have importance, don't get me wrong, but I am think on the level of importance, of the hierarchy of importance, this should be, look, at the end of the day, right, you've got to remember that reverts coming in are complete babies. They've not been integrated from literally the age of, you know, people, kids are coming to the masjid when they're like three years old, younger, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. As a brother, another brother mentioned in the comments, when it comes to the Arabic language, when you're learning Arabic from when you're a kid, you're hearing uh, Al-Fatiha. Like all the time when you're a kid, you're hearing all these surahs, you're going to absorb it. You're literally learning to read Arabic in the madrasa. You, and you just, you're just learning, learning, learning. So much stuff is second nature to you. It's like, for the reaver, it's as if you guys can drive the car no problem, and we might be having, we might be struggling with getting into the right gear, and we might be, uh, what's the word, kulaha, um, mahalaha, as my, um, what's it called, stalling. We're stalling. We might stall with the clutch. You, you know, you, you, you suddenly, you aren't, you aren't fully in control because you don't know the roads, right? And what I'm trying to say is that yes, you of course have to mention but I also, I also think it's important for just like also not pretty much random non-knowledgeable people to be basically telling other like muslims other reverts you know this is some hadith that i is there seems to be like a lack of knowledge being thrown around and it's like the good man about sharing the hadith well i think this is my opinion and inshallah this is my intention that unless you can spit the hadith in Arabic and explain it to me and give me the, the chain of narration and you're at that level, then it's best for you to get studying and keep your head down and worry less about the length of a frobe rather than be kind of shouting other brothers what they should and shouldn't be doing, it does, if that makes sense. And so I'm not telling anybody what to do. I mean, maybe I have done in the, on this channel, maybe I will do, but that's not my intention. My intention is to share my own experience, my own journey, my own opinions, and maybe say, this is what I'm doing or what, this is what I think is best. But I'm not calling out people for having long throbes or not standing with their feet over one another. I, just, I use those as examples to state that sometimes brothers are more concerned about that and less concerned about the purity of their own soul when, you know, it's that whole thing of pointing one finger at somebody, you got three pointing back. Are you somebody who's spoken about the length of somebody's throbe? But if you truly look at yourself, if you truly look at yourself, what have you been doing that displeases Allah? Because nobody's perfect. And of course we repent for our sins and may Allah accept our, um, our call for him to forgive us, Amin. 
But what I'm trying to say is that I just think that the best thing to do for me is my intention, although yes, I'm sharing with the online communities to keep my head down, to study, 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 and get to a point where I'm kind of almost approved uh, to give reminders to people, you know, step up to the masjid and say, guys, something that I've been noticing, for example, which is very common, and I'll end on this, is at the end of the prayer, when the Imam says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. What I do, and I believe that the opinion, and again, I can't spit the Arabic, so I'm being careful here, but um, what is preferred, what is best, is to wait for the Imam to finish rahmatullah. And when I hear la, then I go, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. But some people are literally, they're following, they're going after the Imam so quick, they are actually finishing before the Imam. And Allah knows best whether that invalidates their prayer or not. But my point is that that's not uncommon. And so I know there's difference in opinion across the board, but I think that it, it should be, I think we might forget the amount of adult Muslims that are less knowledgeable than we realize with foundational fundamentals. I remember when I first became Muslim and there was a Pakistani brother who invited me around for iftar one time. And I was like, you know, we obviously broke our fast and we sat down you know 10 minutes goes by and you're thinking like you've almost had your little starter your soup your uh dates etc and now you're thinking like before i dig in proper i'm um, you know let's pray it's been like 10 10 10 minutes 50 minutes max you're thinking i want to pray i've not properly got involved with this food yet so we're going to pray and he goes and he got all awkward with me and i was, just didn't know what's going on so he said you pray you pray you pray i said okay i prayed and after i said i kind of was like curious i only said i don't even know how to pray brother this guy is literally he's fasting at Ramadan, he's giving zakat, he, his wife wears hijab. I didn't see his wife because she didn't inter like show herself kind of thing, but this is the vibe that I got. He has kids and this brother didn't even know how to lead the salat. So I'm not, again, I'm not calling people out. What I'm trying to say is that let's look at fund. Well, the main thing to finish the video is I was trying to say was fundamentals. Fundamentals, you know, there's a hierarchy of importance on what we're doing and what's more important than where you know if your feet are touching in the prayer is actually knowing what to recite in what order and how to lead that's clearly more important you know there's levels of importance the throbe for example uh, how long the throbe is is less important than knowing um, well bearing in mind that you don't even need a throbe again this is you can wear what you want more important than just having purified garments for example to to not be buying your garments with a haram income for example what's better a throbe that is of the appropriate length but the man is buying the throbe and funding his life with haram money or the throbe that's too long but the guy's doing a righteous noble job and it's a halal income this is what i'm trying to say guys it's just a bit of perspective i want to throw out there and i don't think it's fair to say because i don't have Maybe I come across wrong, or maybe the brother um, kind of, I don't know. My, my, main, my main point about this video, about this channel, is to have a dialogue, and I appreciate the engagement. And I just wanted to clarify with this video uh, kind of what my thought process was. I think at the end of the day, I'm human. And although, yes, Islamic knowledge is not my forte, and, and not that a degree nowadays means anything, but my undergraduate degree at university was in philosophy. Philosophy has always been fascination of mine and although yes now that i've kind of com completed um because i did start a master's in the end but i never completed it because i took my shahada and that was a lot to absorb and i was thinking you know i'm studying about greek philosophy and chinese theology here and i need to understand how to pray in arabic so the master's degree got a bit too much for me i had to drop it and i jumped on to just basically getting to basics getting a foundation in Islam and then very quickly I basically started courting my wife and and then you know suddenly things progress really quickly and this is why I'm trying to settle down and return to the study but my point is that as a philosopher arguably I've, I've done the kind of western Greek philosophy tradition the western classical and modern philosophy and now I'm moving into a whole new kind of I've moved to the east and I'm absorbing all this and, but I'm having to start as a baby from the foundation. So 
I'm not saying that I'm qualified in any special way, but I think like I say, my every man's opinion is valid to some degree. <laughs> um, but the main thing I wanted to say, okay, to finish the video is I respect and I'm very happy for the engagement. Really appreciate it. Big up your good selves for that. And the main thing I wanted to get across is I'm getting tired now and my mouth's dry, so panel love, but obviously it's uh, fasting time. So I need to sleep. Hopefully that will. I'm going to rinse my mouth, make wudu, uh, and get some get some well-needed shut-eye because the rambler is rambling right now and his uh, sleepy eyes are becoming incredibly wanting to close. <laughs> uh, but yes, hopefully that clears up where I was coming across from. I do understand the irony. There's a lack of knowledge in the community and I too have a lack of knowledge. So what am I calling people to? I'm calling people to Islam, brother. I'm calling people to join the Ummah, to take their Shahada. And if just one person does that, then that would be a great success. As Again, I can't speak the Arabic, but I've picked up over the last few years something along the lines of if one person embraces Islam through your influence, through your doing, then this is better than everything in the world. And so that's kind of one of the inspirations, one of the motivations to start this channel is if I can plant a few seeds, then alhamdulillah, that could be of some benefit. And also I've got the unique perspective of somebody who's not knowledgeable, who wants to seek knowledge, somebody who's come into the community and can see a few things that, you know, could probably do with some improvement. I mean, like say, all well and good doing extensions on the already existing masajid in the areas, extra floors, extra rooms, but could that not be spent better on education on the people that are actually attending the masajid themselves? Maybe, maybe not, Allah knows best. So I'm just throwing out some ideas. And like I said earlier, any benefit comes from Allah, any mistakes and errors are completely my own. And I appreciate everybody watching the videos. Of course, please do like the video if you watch it this far. You're certainly, like I keep saying, entering the tribe, the Anglo-Islamic gentleman tribe, if you've watched this far. And if you've so if you watched this far and you don't subscribe and you haven't subscribed yet, then I mean you're missing out because it would really help me out. <laughs> because it helps the algorithms and that kind of stuff. And the main thing, to be completely transparent, I'll say this. Part of <coughs> excuse me. Allah Akbar. Part of doing these videos is to ask for help. And it takes, I think, a courageous man to ask for help because it's embarrassing, man. If you don't know how to pray, you don't know dua, you don't know this, you don't know that, you feel you feel like a fool. And the, the real fool is the one that doesn't ask for help and remains a fool. And this can now get philosophical again, but and, and the wise man is the fool that asks for help and becomes wise. And so, again, if somebody hears that, maybe they think, well, I don't know as much as I should and I want to know more. This is why maybe creating more groups, more communities, people coming together outside of, again, this kind of like judgment. And that, of course, there has to be a hierarchy, but the hierarchy, the people in the higher up in the hierarchy need to realize the huge responsibility they have to be gentle and inspire the ones uh, lower down. And so I'm going to leave the video here. I'm happy for the comments because they've inspired they inspire more videos and, and more dialogue. And it's, at this point now, it's literally never ending. And inshallah, I'm going to be able to release videos on a daily basis for the rest of my life. And they're going to be getting better and better and better with increased quality, better equipment, and more knowledge myself. So, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to all of the Muslims listening. And of course, peace and security, success and prosperity to all of the humans in the world. And I pray that, well, Allah knows best, basically. So always remember, big up your good selves. Until next time, folks.